Professor Dave and Chegg here. At this point in our study of chemistry, it will be necessary to dramatically expand our conception of the structure of an atom, such that it is much more sophisticated than this more familiar planetary model, which is not representative of reality. We need to truly understand atoms on a deeper level, and in order to do that, we are going to have to learn a little bit of physics. Let's start out by discussing light. Of course, we are all familiar with light, but what is light exactly? What is it made of? This is a question that we have asked for a long time. In the 17th century, Isaac Newton worked with prisms to show that white light we see all around us actually consists of all the colors of the rainbow put together, and he described his findings in optics by evoking a corpuscular view of light, which implies that light is composed of tiny particles. But others at the same time, such as Christian Huygens, showed that optical phenomena like reflection and refraction could be best explained by characterizing light as being made of waves. In the 19th century, Thomas Young showed that light traveling through narrow slits produces interference patterns that also could not be explained by the particle model, but instead made perfect sense in terms of waves. Later, James Clerk Maxwell developed his theory of electromagnetic radiation and showed that visible light is only a tiny section of a vast spectrum of electromagnetic waves, which further discredited the particle model. So at that particular time in physics, we viewed the universe as consisting of particles of matter governed by Newton's laws of motion and waves of light governed by Maxwell's equations. As it turned out, this view was incorrect, and in reality, both matter and light have to be described using wave-particle duality. This meant that what we now refer to as Newton's classical mechanics and Maxwell's classical electrodynamics do not offer a complete description of reality, but they are still very useful models that provide a lot of information about various phenomena. Electromagnetic radiation is relevant to chemistry because of the way light interacts with matter, giving us information about the energies of the electrons in an atom. We've also used electromagnetic radiation to create all kinds of technology, like microwaves, x-rays, and radio waves, to make our lives easier and to help us communicate. So we need to know a little bit about the wave-like properties of light. What is a wave, anyway? Well, there are the waves in the ocean, and there are waves of light. Whatever kind of wave we are describing, it is an oscillation or periodic movement that transports energy from one place to another. Just shake the end of a rope or drop a rock into a pond to see the behavior of waves. With any kind of wave, the matter involved stays more or less in place. It's just kinetic energy that travels. Think of a stadium of sports fans that do the wave, standing up and sitting down in sequence all the way around the stadium. The wave itself appears to travel very quickly, while none of the people are actually going anywhere. Any wave will have an amplitude, which is this vertical distance. It will have a wavelength, or the lateral distance from crest to crest, or trough to trough. It will also have a frequency, or the number of wavelengths that pass by a particular spot per unit time. Now, returning to the electromagnetic spectrum, we can see that as wavelength changes, frequency will change in inverse fashion. So a greater wavelength means a lower frequency, while a shorter wavelength means a greater frequency, and consequently a greater energy. Very short wavelengths of light transmit a lot of energy, such as is the case with gamma radiation, which has the shortest wavelength. The longest wavelengths correspond to radio waves, which transmit very little energy. It may be a good idea to study this diagram and get a sense of the relative wavelengths, frequencies, and energies of the various types that are listed, so as to contextualize further discussion of electromagnetic radiation. Now, as we mentioned earlier, despite all the tremendous evidence supporting the wave nature of light, it was eventually found that light must also have a corpuscular nature, or particle-like properties. This was the beginning of the revolution that produced quantum physics, so let's move forward and talk about the most basic concepts that will be relevant to our study of chemistry. Professor Dave for Chegg. See you next time.